Hi, my name is Gary Arnold. I'm the Public Affairs Manager at Access Living, and this is Adapt Productions. Today, we're filming at Access Living, and I have uh, two guests with me for this conversation. On my far left, uh, I've got Curtis Harris, uh, an advocate uh, with Access Living, and uh, uh, to my direct left, I've got Timetheus or TJ uh, Gordon, also an advocate with Access Living, uh, and, uh, as well as a poet, an artist, and an all-round uh, a- a- advocate, uh, from what I know. <laughs> I'm happy uh, you're both here today, and thank you for joining us. Um, today we want to talk about uh, uh, gun control, gun violence, and specifically as it relates to disabilities, and specifically uh, we want to respond and talk about the actions of President Obama. Uh, we all know within the past few months there have been two uh, highly publicized uh, horrific uh, mass shootings. Uh, one was in Paris and then following that there was a, a shooting in San Bernardino, California. And that one, uh, though it uh, wasn't found to have anything really to do with disability, it actually happened at an agency that, that serves people with disabilities in California. Uh, Following the San Bernardino uh, shooting, uh, President Obama uh, addressed the nation and he introduced uh, some executive action geared toward reducing gun violence. And there's a specific piece of that action that has a lot of people within the disability community uh, concerned. Uh, while uh, the president did propose uh, investing uh, millions of more dollars into mental health services, uh, he also proposed um, what amounts to uh, putting people with psychiatric disabilities on a, a screening list or, 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 or on a list that screens people uh, 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 who, who, for, for, for guns. Um, specifically, I think what it, what it is is uh, he plans to use the Social Security representative payee da- database, use that database to identify people with psychiatric disabilities and then use those names that are flagged as people with psychiatric disabilities in the database and put them in the National Instant Criminal Background Check System. So that means even if you have no prior record of violence or anything like that, uh, if you're in that Social Security payee database and you are a, a person uh, with a psychiatric disability, you're going to get be put on that background checklist. So why is this uh, a, a, a problem? What, what, what does this do? Uh, Curtis, let's start with you, and then uh, we'll move on to TJ. The President's executive order on gun violence and targeting people with mental illness only stigmatize that people with mental illness are more violent, despite the fact that only 4% of Americans with psychiatric disabilities commit gun violence murder. Did you say 4% yes. of people with psychiatric disabilities? Uh, uh, so of all, what you're saying, according to statistics you have, of all of, of the violent events that are on record that happen as a result of guns, only 4% of those are perpetrated by people with mental illness. Is that what you're, what you're saying? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then, but by, by doing this and specifically singling out people with mental illness, then it kind of, it, 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 it sends a message that people with disability, people with mental illness specifically, are, are dangerous, right? And, 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 and should not be allowed to have the same freedoms as others when it comes to purchasing firearms. Is that, what you, is that kind of the message that this sends? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, TJ, what, what do you have to say about this? I mean, while I agree with Obama's policy to fight the to um, fight against um, gun controls in their own hands, especially against, let's say, um, people threatening people's freedoms and such, or criminals. It, this particular part about screening <coughs> people with disabilities, in particular people with a mental illness, is very problematic for a, a lot of reasons. The main reason because what is defined 
according to the Obama administration, mental illness. Does this mean anybody with mental illness cannot have a um, gun, even if they have proven through police records, through medical records, that they are no threat to society? Or are they really talking against the ones who um, are a huge, who are legitimately are a huge threat? And unfortunately, unless I unless of course I could probably talk to the president, we don't know. Right. And also, another issue I have with this is, oftentimes there are people with developmental disabilities, such as people with autism, people with Down syndrome, who may also have mental illness as well, that may not be able to get a gun for hunting purposes, for instance, simply because not only they're mentally ill, but because they have a developmental disability. So that's two presidents working against the person instead of just one. Right, right, exactly. So by instituting some kind of an action like this, it seems like, A, um, uh, we're kind of perpetuating this stigma and stereotype against disability, a message that says, well before even these the two most recent mass shootings in Paris and, and San Bernardino, um, you know, the, the message has been sent out long before through p politicians, through the media, I think kind of linking mental illness to, to gun violence incorrectly. Uh, so we're kind of perpetuating those stereotypes. And then also, uh, you know, through this database system, it seems like it's going to uh, uh, really create a roadblock, you know, for like, like you say, for somebody who happens to have a disability who might want to purchase a gun for, for hunting purposes. Uh, you know, it's going to create a roadblock for them. And why should that roadblock be created for them simply because of their disability if, if other people uh, uh, do, do not have the, the disability? Um, so let's talk about this in a, in a big picture kind of way for a, a, a minute, you know, because um, I, I think in, in terms of the stigma and the stereotypes, this was an issue even before the, 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 the shootings uh, late in 2015. Um, oftentimes, you know, when there is a mass shooting, uh, some kind of link is, is drawn, uh, whether it's true or it's not, to, to mental illness. Um, uh, uh, what can you say about that trend, and, and what are some ways that, that as advocates, we and as the general public can, can help combat against that trend of, of stereotype and stigma? Any ideas of, 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 of what can be done so we start shifting the message uh, away from, you know, the message that says people with, with psychiatric disabilities have a propensity to violence, we should keep them away from guns. You know, how do we change that? First question is who should we, who should go first? <laughs> right. You're on the spot, Curtis. Yeah, what I need to say is that what the uh, Obama administration as well as the Ron administration and the Emmanuel administration need to do is uh, invest money into mental health services because mental health services here in Illinois are inadequate. Illinois ranks 49th out of 50 states in mental health funding. It's underfounded and it it's undermined. And, and the budget impasse in the state doesn't help. In fact, thresholds <coughs> will be short staffed as of Friday because last week uh, staff left thresholds, and this week another staff is leaving, and so thresholds would not be able to hire someone from the outside because they put a hiring freeze. So are they leaving as a result of, of layoffs and budget cuts? No. The one lady moved on to work at the uh, Lakeshore Hospital, mm -hmm. while the other lady who's leaving this Friday is going home to Bloomington. Okay. But nevertheless, they've left, and even though they weren't laid off or fired uh, as a result of budget cuts, the thresholds is not filling the position no. uh, because of the, the bu budget impasse. And they're also not hiring support employment specialists. From what I heard, that thresholds may have cut support employment program or not hiring people, or, who, or they may have laid off people, because I've been around support employment specialists since August. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And and what does this mean? Uh, these law, you know, because this goes way back. I think toward the beginning of the the first Mayor Emanuel administration and the closure of the of those mental health clinics. Uh, what does that mean for, 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 for people with psychiatric disabilities with the closure of those clinics, with the current budget impasse? You know, where do people go for services now? What, what, what do you do if you're a person with, with, uh, with uh, mental health or mental illness and, and, and you want to seek services? Unfortunately, uh, most of the people who get mental health treatment is at Cook County Jail. And that's the largest mental health provider in the state, uh -huh. second in the nation, uh -huh. behind L.A., County jail. So when I, I, I hear that a lot, uh, I think the sheriff is 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 fond of saying that as as a message. Uh, but what exactly does that mean? How how does somebody you know uh, because the clinic is closed or because threshold is 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 uh, 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 unable to staff programs because of the budget or other providers unable to staff pro uh, programs and then and then the message is sent. Well, then the Cook County Jail becomes the provider. How does that work? What exactly? Do, uh, how, how does that come into reality? They uh, they don't get enough treatment at Cook County Jail like they do at community mental health centers like Threshold, C4, Trilogy. But how does somebody wind up in the jail? Committing probably committing crime or whatever is shoplifting <coughs> or sleeping under the uh, violet or expressway violet. Okay. So is the argument that, that's made, is it like because these services are not available in the community, then somebody who is seeking services is unable to get them, you know, because of maybe death circumstances, winds up on the street, or is forced to commit a crime in order to, you know, get medication or get uh, uh, something that they need, and then they end up being arrested and wind up in jail, and that's where they can get the services? Yes, is that but, how it kind of plays out? Yeah, yes, it does. You don't want it that way. What you you want to get services where it's cheaper at community mental health centers. And what I was told by the threshold distance center for recovery in Lincoln Park is that they they're gonna be forced to cut hours, including right. closing on Thursdays, because of staff shortage and probably the budget impasse. Right. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? <clears throat> yes. Um, while we talking on a state level, from a national and perhaps even a global level, we got to change how we view mental illness from a um, media standpoint because, of course, media is, get, is where we get a lot of our information. Internet, the social networks, television still, etc. And from the past, we usually see mental illness represented by, let's say, a character who does something very, very extreme that goes off harming somebody or killing somebody because of, I don't know, some, some fantasy, for instance. I think we got to change the narrative to what's really going on with mental health and just tell people's um, stories like it is. Right. It just open people's eyes, especially in underrepresented communities where they don't even ha have as much information on mental illness as, um, I, no, I should say more concrete information mm -hmm. on mental illness. Mm -hmm. I just think we need to open people's eyes with a, more awareness and more acceptance. Right. Right, right. And how do you think, uh, uh, are there any good examples out there of, of, of how that can be done in terms of raising positive awareness or constructive awareness around mental illness and, and psychiatric disability? One is I'm going to think on top of my head is active minds throughout colleges where they not only bring awareness to the college campuses, but also they provide resources that people could go to through the state or through just online resources in general and mm -hmm. and it's also a you can say it's also a support network as well because oftentimes in college it can be very stressful mm -hmm. a lot of tests or you going to college because let's say you're the first in the family that could bring a lot of pressure all those factors size in it is best to have 
a support group that could um, help you navigate towards um, college. Or right. in fact, in general, it's best to have a support group in general. Right, right, right. So have have those resources in place when yes. somebody goes to like a new stressful situation like college uh, and kind of, you know, I think it'd be good to have those resources in place throughout someone's life, you know, in high school, college, uh, employment. Uh, uh, Curtis, what do you think? What's the uh, uh, way to kind of change the narrative on a, on the bit on the, on the global in the global picture in terms of uh, mental illness and, and change people's attitudes? Uh, provide funding to community mental health centers across the nation, state, and city. Right. Yeah. And what we need to, to do is uh, educate our legislators and Congress and U.S. Senators about mental illness and that if, they, if left untreatable, there will be serious consequences. Right, right, right. Agreed. Right. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's, um, you know, we'll finish up soon, but let's, you know, take it back to this uh, executive action. Um, um, you know, uh, what do you think President Obama should do? regarding uh, this executive action. Uh, should you just like take that part out or change it in some way? Um, you know, if you were the president, you know, and you had the power to deliver an executive action, what, 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 would, what would you do? I would tell the, uh, about the Congress and Senate that uh, I'm going to take this executive order, I'm going to provide resources and funding to mental health communities so people can live outstanding lives and live thriving in the community. Right, yeah. Kind of, so kind of focused, rather than on, you know, perpetuating this stereotype and stigma and preventing people with disabilities from doing something, <clears throat> giving, providing the support they need, uh, people need, in order to, you know, be healthy and participate and be active uh, citizens, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And also, if I was the president, still have the um, still have the uh, federal gun control um, ordinance in place because once again we want to make sure that Americans are safe. However, instead of using Social Security and also instead of just focusing generally on mental illness or particular disabilities let's look let's look through rap sheets or mm -hmm. let's look through like medical records or even if it's documented any stories from close friends or teachers or family members and let's use that to determine if a person should own a gun for self-protection or for hunting as opposed to just using Social Security only. Right. And I think what's interesting, I think what's insightful that what you just said, like, look at someone's actual record when it comes to, to crime. You know, don't look at a diagnosis uh, of disability, which doesn't necessarily mean anything. I think what's very interesting about that is uh, I had heard that uh, 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 there was a proposal to put people on the no-fly list uh, also on the uh, on 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 the screening for 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 people who want want, want to purchase a gun mm -hmm. um and yet and so the no fly list if you're on the no fly list that means um i think you know that it, you, you do have that history uh the rap sheet that 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 makes you uh uh seen as a threat uh, a possible uh, uh, a threat to to other travelers. Um, so this is people. These are people who who might actually have a, a, a record. And yet, when that proposal came forward, there was all sorts of backlash, saying this infringed on a person's uh, a Second Amendment rights. Yet we don't see see the same backlash. Um, except for within the disability community, when it comes to to putting people on the psych with like psychiatric disabilities on, on the screening list, um, yes. I think that you know says a lot about stigma uh, when, when it comes to to, to, to to disability these days. How how people with disabilities, if your Second Amendment rights are in, infringed upon, you know it's okay. But if you're on the no fly list, you know uh, you should not have your your Second Amendment's rights in, in, infringed upon. I, I find that very fascinating. Um, any final word? Oh, go ahead. No, I said that's how politics works. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, 
So any final uh, thoughts either of you want to share? Yes, we're in the 21st century, and for the last 100 years or 200 years that people with mental illness have been locked up in institutions and in nursing homes and state institutions until the uh, destigmatizing movement of the 50s when thresholds first started in 1959 and later the Civil Rights Act and the Rehab Act of 73 mm -hmm. is that people must be educated and, and get service in the least restricted environment. Unfortunately, we still have a lot of people with mental illness locked up in institutions. Despite the uh, U.S. Supreme Court ruling our homestead of 1999. Right. Yeah, it's been very difficult to implement that, especially in Illinois, but in other parts of the country as well. We're st still fighting against institutional bias and the money that, that really uh, goes into to, to institutions. So, so that struggle will continue, unfortunately, in the years to come. But I, I want to thank our, our guests today, uh, Curtis Harris and Timotheus uh, uh, Gordon. Uh, we've been talking about uh, psychiatric disabilities and the, the stigma around psychiatric disability regarding con control and, and other issues. So my name is Gary Arnold. This has been uh, Chicago Adapt Productions. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Have a great day.